Is the RTX 2080 still worth buying in 2023? If you're looking for a good 4K capable PC within a thousand euros, you'll surely consider the 2080 for your GPU. But is it any good in 2023? Today we're going to find out just that. We'll have a look at synthetic loads, games and productivity tests. Let's start by talking about the GPU itself. The RTX 2080 was released in 2018, so it's almost five years old. Built upon the Turing architecture with the TU-104 processor, this GPU offers 2944 CUDA cores with a base clock of 1515 MHz and a boost clock of up to 1710 MHz. It also has 184 texture units, 64 render output units, 368 tensor cores and 46 ray tracing cores. It has 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory with a max bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second. It requires 8 plus 6 pins of power input due to the 216 watts of TDP. If it means nothing to you, we'll start talking about effective performance in a second. This GPU has been undervolted the one in my PC, which is a Palit Gamerock RTX 28. To run cooler, but at a higher clock. If you want to undervolt your 2080 as well, I will leave a video tutorial from my friend I'm watering PSUs in the description below. Let's move on to effective performance. First off, let's talk about temperatures. In a synthetic load, I've used for Mark, the GPU stays below 69 degrees. Noise. <laughs> even at full load after 15 minutes of sustained 100% load. In games, it usually stays between 60 to 65 degrees. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 4K, pretty much everything maxed out, except for ray tracing, it scores an average of 87 FPS. In Rainbow Six Siege 4K, everything ultra, it scores 239 FPS, in the benchmark, although in game it's usually between 250 and 300 FPS. In Rocket League, all maxed out at 4K, it scores an average of 150 FPS, although you don't want to play maxed out. Nor on Rocket League, neither in Rainbow Six. It changes nothing from light medium, and FPSs are off of it. CSGO runs at about 150 to 300 FPS, but it's more of a CPU intensive game and by the way I'm using a Ryzen 5 5600. First Horizon 5 scores 68 FPS at 4K almost everything maxed out, although in games it remains constant at 72 FPS no matter what you do. As for God of War, the situation is really close to Forza Horizon 5 with FPS in the neighborhood of 80 with 4K DLSS on. If you don't care about gaming but you're into video making, you won't be disappointed neither. My video build of this PC, which includes 7 minutes of 4K 60Hz with minor effects, took only 6 minutes to render. All the TikToks you can see on my profile, link in the description, render within seconds. I consider this the best GPU and PC overall that the average gamer or casual video editor really needs. With a thousand euros, you get a PC that can efficiently handle everything you possibly need to do and play every game at 4K without any problem, except for ray tracing, which is not great on this card. But you'll play nicely even with the most recent games. If you consider the price, which is around 300 to 350 euros, but I got mine for 270, so you can even score great deals here in Italy at least, it's one of the best options you can find right now on the second hand market. If you're wondering about the complete specs of this PC right here, you can check out this video right here. Link in the description and on the eye icon right here. Overall, the RTX 2080 still offers impressive performances in 2023, especially for gaming and video editing tasks. It may not be the top of the line option anymore, because <laughs> it's two generations old at this point, but it's still a solid choice for those on a budget or looking to buy a used GPU. Its 4K capabilities and efficient rendering makes it a great option for almost 
everyone looking to build a PC that can handle a variety of tasks. So is the RTX still worth buying in 2023? The answer is yes, it definitely is. Thanks for watching, if you've liked this video make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one, ciao!